All right, guys, I want to talk to you guys about the figs that we have in front of me. I legitimately have bowls of figs that uh, I picked this morning. I spent about 45 minutes to an hour making sure that I got every single fruit, but the issue is that these fruits are not all going to be enjoyable or even edible. Um, if I were to eat some of these fruits, I probably wouldn't want to spit them out. Um, a lot of them are not picked to perfection. Um, a lot of them have split, like you see here. And the reason for that is we recently got, last night, um, about an inch to two inches of rain. I don't know exactly. I didn't, I didn't really look it up, but I'll tell you that uh, it was a huge rainstorm with a ton of wind. And uh, this is normally something that happens. This is a pretty common occurrence in the fall here in this climate in the Philadelphia area. We just get so much rain. Um, usually at some point in the fall or some point in September that it just ruins all the figs. And um, therefore I, am, I was forced to pick a lot of these extremely, extremely early. Uh, if they had split in any degree, if the eye is now split, if the side of the fruit cracked and has a large crack in it, exposing, if the inside of the fig is exposed to the outside elements, they're going to ferment. They're going to start to ferment. Um, and what happens when they start to ferment is that I then get the fruit fly. I get the spotted winged drosophilia. And that fruit fly is attracted to the fermenting fruits, regardless if they're figs, regardless of what it is. I've seen them in Asian pears. I've seen them in, in raspberries and strawberries and uh, blueberries, all kinds of fruits. And they really become an issue. They really become a problem because um, once those fruit flies are higher in number and they're really in your yard, they then will start to go after fruits that are not fermenting just yet. They are really just starting to ripen and they will infect the fruits from this point on. So the only way really to combat that is to pick all the split fruits, to pick everything or many of the fruits uh, that you can pick. And that way it doesn't give them as much of a food source. Um, I do have traps and different things like the bucket of fermenting fruit that I've showed you guys in other videos. Uh, but this is just kind of what you have to deal with here in the Northeast. Um, this is going to happen every single year, and I still don't understand how some people um, can even think about recommending not getting your figs to ripen as early as possible. You know, there's, a, there's two debates, right? There's one type of person who wants, like myself, who wants the earliest figs possible, uh, and there's another type of person who isn't, who's not really willing uh, who is willing to sacrifice earlier fruits to then get more fruits. Well, you can see right in front of me, I have plenty of fruits. I have plenty of fruits now that it's October. Unfortunately, because I didn't pinch this year nearly as much as I would have in prior years, um, a lot of my fruits now are ripening today. Where this would happen actually 15 days prior, I would have this quantity of fruits, September 15th, rather than October 1st, which is really what it is today. So this is really quite a shame um, and so many levels. But again, I think this is just giving you guys a reality check. You know, this is my experience. Um, if you live in a similar climate to mine, this is going to be your experience in most years. You know, um, I remember the first year that I grew figs, uh, we had a rain event that lasted five days. It did not stop raining. And on my most mature tree that I purchased from Home Depot, it was a, a Kidota. And on this Kidota, I had so many fruits ripening. It was sometime in September. I don't remember the exact date, but I had a lot of fruits ripening at one time. For whatever reason, that year on that variety, they all ripened roughly around the same time. And the rain event came through and it ruined every single fig on that tree um, to the point where I barely got any to really say, oh my God, figs are amazing. You know, if I didn't get any before that rain event, um, I don't know what I would have done. I don't even know if I'd be growing figs at this point. Um, it's really quite a shame. 
that this is just something that happens. And I want to give you guys some tips. Here's some tips on how to sort of alleviate this problem or avoid this problem as much as possible. Well, so if you have a rain event, there's not a whole lot you can do. Obviously, I think personally over time, um, having in-ground trees is going to help your cause more than having a potted tree because as I've explained in other videos, this is all really dependent on the soil moisture. If you can control the soil moisture, having a consistent, um, really a consistently moist or consistently drier than moist soil is going to net you the highest fruit quality possible. It's going to get you basically figs that will not split nearly as often. You're going to have a higher bricks. Because you're going to have a higher bricks, you're not going to have nearly as much fermentation. Uh, you're going to have figs that taste better, that are sweeter, that resist mold better, um, and also will hang out on the counter for a longer period of time. So overall, you want to control the water. That's really the key to this whole thing. But if it's going to rain one to two inches overnight, <laughs> here's what you can do. First off, you got to pick all the figs before the rain. Um, anything that's ripe, I would just, or even close to ripe, I would probably just pick it before the rain event. I didn't do that this time around. I couldn't get out there and, uh, and accomplish that. I have not been really paying attention too closely to these figs uh, the last few weeks, but um, that's a big tip. Another big one is um, if you can cover them, I would cover them. You know, if you have them in pots, maybe you can have an awning or maybe you can set something up that covers them. Maybe you got some plastic. Maybe you're growing them under plastic, you know. Um, that's ideally the best scenario possible. And for me, at some point in the future, I'm going to be growing the majority of my figs under high tunnels, um, under plastic. You know, there's just absolutely really no way that, I mean, even if you were to grow them, let's say, not under plastic, you were to grow them in the ground, I think that's a better choice because you can, over time, your in-ground tree is going to send out a lot of roots. It's going to be less subjected to a lot of soil moisture. It wasn't just, by the way, guys, you know, last night. It was, this has been happening over time over the last week or two. You know, it's been raining more and more uh, frequently over the last week. So because the soil is getting more wet and more wet, and then it's just at one time we're getting one to two inches, that's a really big issue. So let's say you're growing them in pots. If you had, if I had a soil that was pretty close to dry before this rain event happened, I wouldn't have nearly as many split fruit. So that's another big one is that if you can really, like I said, you can control that soil moisture to a T. Let's say you can even prevent any rain from getting in, you're gonna be way better off. But if not, at least turn off your irrigation, you know. Um, I should have turned my irrigation off about two weeks ago. Um, I turned it on because things were getting too dry. But I turned it back on and I just got not as, um, as disciplined with the irrigation as I should be. And therefore, there has just been too much soil moisture um, in the pots, in the soil. So knowing that, um, you're going into a rain event with a pretty wet soil as it is and you're just going to have the effect compounded even more so that's a couple of big tips there it's really it's just all about controlling that moisture in the soil there's nothing really you can do about the rain hitting the figs you know you can control the rain hitting the, the soil um, probably easier than you can control the rain hitting the figs themselves but you know, assuming you're growing them outside, you're going to just struggle with this. And this is just something that, again, you're going to have problems with. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you some of these fruits here, guys, because um, we just have a lot. And I want to show you really just what it is that we're dealing with. Um, we'll taste some of them. Um, just in general we will enjoy some figs and talk about the really, really bad ones. <laughs> so I'm gonna basically create a bowl here, I think, of some that have split and fermented. And we'll kind of do like a count at the end of what's edible, you know, what I can even do with some of these. 
Um, this is an Italian 258 that is quite soft and something had unfortunately bit through this it looks like. Something actually bit through this, not the rain affected it, but this is my in-ground Italian 258 that's been there for, this is its third season. And you can tell it's not split, which is really quite impressive because um, that's really the theory behind all this is that if we plant these trees in the ground, I'm going to have a long enough period of time where they dig themselves in and essentially I just don't have nearly as much splitting. I'm actually going to cut off some of this dirt. Um, I think I really need to get myself another bowl. I'll be right back guys in one second. So that's kind of the, uh, the idea there, guys, is that the Italian 258, believe it or not, is kind of going right along with the theory um, that the in-ground trees eventually dig themselves in and do not split nearly as often, um, whereas the potted trees, unless you can control the moisture 100%, as I've done in the past by putting plastic bags, plastic tra trash bags over top of the figs. That was really the only way that I can control the moisture um, if I'm not growing it under plastic. So let's cut this fruit open. It's not going to look very good, but I'll tell you it is good. Actually, it does look really good. <laughs> That's a ton of syrup in there. Holy crap. Um, Let's give it a smell. It actually, it doesn't smell fermented. That's really good. So, kind of sucks, you know, that this is just something I'm dealing with, but there is hope. There is light at the end of this tunnel, right? Um, that's a main message I think I want to get across to you guys. So I'm going to create, I think, two different piles here. One is our trash pile. One is a jam pile because some of these figs, although they have split, they have not fermented. So because they have not fermented, we still can use them for jam. And that's what I exactly am going to do. Now, hopefully I can remember all of the varieties here. This one has definitely fer fermented to some extent. There's so many varieties, I can't even really keep track. This is going to be for jam. Um, fermented, it's, you know, as soon as they split open, guys, they really just start to ferment. Assuming the temperatures are warm, and also assuming the temperatures are warm, the fruit flies will be more active. This is a really nice fruit, whatever this is. Um, but a large part of this is fermented. It's kind of a shame. I don't know what half, half of these are, unfortunately. I just don't remember. I think these are, yeah, these are the Paradiso from Ciro. And uh, I knew that this fig was going to be a splitter as it was last year. However, I do see some value in it. So I'm keeping it, I think, for the meantime. But it's just, if it's going to continue to do this, um, it just will not remain in my collection. And inevit inevitably, it will not remain in my collection, but I'm keeping it around. Here's one that's not ripe, and it's fermented. I don't know what that is. This looks like a smith. This one seems all right. Nah. I, I mean, when in doubt, I think I'm just going to toss them. You know, when they have these big eyes to them and they're split like that, and you can even see it, you can see the fermentation. Not only can you smell it, but you can see it. This, I believe, is a Smith. Let's cut this open. This one looks pretty good. Yeah, that does look pretty good, but I'm not entirely sold on if that's a Smith or not.
Guess we could try it. Yeah. Kind of tastes like an underripe Smith. Hunting at the eye. I know I picked a few Smiths here somewhere. This is, I think, an LSU Tiger, which I was kind of surprised to see how dark red it got, but then uh, see the inside now. It's kind of pink. This one will we'll, uh, turn into jam. Um, I'll just cut this open for you guys. This is Iraqi, the Palmata Hybrid. It takes a long time for this fig to ripe, to be ripe, unfortunately. And uh, it has huge seeds in it. I was kind of surprised to learn that these Palmata hybrids have such huge seeds. Here is a Bial that is fermented. Yeah, that smells horrible. When you eat a fermenting fig, you really, you really, uh, you got some, you got, you're going to be turned off of figs for quite some time. This one here is split. This is a Daloso that fermented really badly. I don't know why I keep smelling them. I know they fermented. Why do I do that? This is a, uh, another Paradiso from Ciro. Again, it has uh, fermented quite a bit. This, I believe, is also another Smith. Yep. That looks really good. <laughs> uh, I just know it's not perfectly ripe, but that's really impressive. Um, really impressive. Here's a Bial that has split, but uh, I don't know if it really fermented on me. I think this one's good, but it's not ripe. I don't see much value in it. In terms of eating it, we're going to uh, put that one in the jam. This is fermented as well. What is it? This is another Daloso, I believe. And uh, only a portion of this is fermented, and the rest of it's ripe. So I actually, I kind of want to... Uh, I don't, we don't have to eat this, but I can use this for jam. Here's another Smith. Uh, or actually, this might be not Smith, but uh, Hatib de Argentile. I don't know what half of these figs are. What a mess. Here's another Smith. That looks real good except the bottom of it looks maybe a little bit fermented. Let's try it. Oh. It has a little bit of a fermentation taste to it. It just started to ferment. Yuck. You know what? It could also not be fermented. Here is a uh, Rosalino. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Holy crap. The issue, though, I think is what's happening with these figs is that there's all these fermenting juices here at the bottom of this bowl. What is this? This is a Luzano. And all these fermenting juices, I think, have essentially just gave that Smith a bad taste to it. So that's, actually, I think the Smith here, if, if I could get the outside off of this, all the juices off of this, I think I'll try it again. Yeah. So the fig itself is not fermented. The fact that I was eating it with the juices on it from the other figs, because when they, when they ferment like this, they'll leak all kinds of nectar that's also fermented. And it just ruins 
the other figs actually if it's touching it. So that's, I guess, in a sense, good to know. All of you guys watching. Um, here's some Galicia Negras that uh, not fermented, but obviously split wide open like an alien. Split wide open like an alien. I don't think that's fermented. This variety splits very, very easily. Um, we need to have a bowl here or a plate for the figs that are edible. <laughs> um, let's go over. This is Ondata. This is a really big fig. There's another Ondata right here, which uh, had some dirt on it. I found it actually, it fell off the tree. Which is not never, it's never really a good sign when that happens. Very, very young. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like a brown turkey. It's a huge fig. Void. It's got that brown turkey look to it. Still young, it grows very vigorously though. Puts out a lot of fruit. I really do think this is some kind of strain of brown turkey. I think Big Bill's kind of excited for it, but I'm not. Really not all that great. Just meh to me. Let's try the more ripe one that looks a lot like a brown turkey, actually. Looks like an elongated brown turkey. Yeah. I don't have to eat that, you know? I don't see much benefit in eating that. I'll just turn it into jam. All right, now... What is this fig and what is this fig? This I think is, these are maybe Capulcurt Negra. Yeah, but is one of them Cavalieri? I don't know. There's also this Rosalino. I never tasted this and I never tasted the Hetive de Argentil. Am I brave enough? I think we have to wash them off. Let's try the Hatif. Well, that didn't cut well. <laughs> the, knife, the knife really didn't cut that fig very well. But there it is. It kind of looks very strange. Very good. In fact, that was one of the figs on that, you know, that I've, that I've harvested today that's on the same level as like something like Smith in terms of its split resistance. Here's some I picked a couple days ago and they've been hanging out in the fridge. This is before the rain. <laughs> These guys, this fig, this fig is so incredible. I mean, that's just what it's all about right there. Pools of honey in these, in these fruits. Absolutely just cherry bombs. These are cherry fig bombs. Let's try this. Yeah. That one's much more cherry. And the other one there, very, very good. That's an extremely good piece of fruit, considering the circumstances, especially. Um, I'm gonna cut these open and I don't know what this is. I think this is Cavalieri. That's 
what this looks like to me. Where are the Capole Curtain Agras I harvested? This might be a Capole Curtain Agra. Pretty sure I only harvested one Cavalieri. There it is, guys. Didn't split, believe it or not. Didn't split. What else do I got over here? I got so many freaking varieties. Uh, goodness, what is this? This doesn't look very good, whatever it is. Here is actually, uh, I have a number of Verdino del Nord some that I picked yesterday or two days ago. Um, some that I picked after this rain event. Believe it or not, the Verdino del Nord really didn't look too great after all this rain. Um, however, I do know that the soil is just not right. None of them seem to have fermented, which is good. Wow. <laughs> it's actually really good. Oh my God. Um, yeah, none of these uh, Verdino del Nords, I mean, they will start to ferment if I had left them out there, I guess, but what a just a special, special fig. I, and here's a whole plate of them over here I picked two days ago. Um, so there's just a crap ton of those. How many of them do I have here? They're not even really the smallest size, uh, you know. They've got some decent size to them. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty small fig, but they've actually got some pretty good uh, size to them, I find. I can't imagine one of these not fermenting. It's kind of insane if that's really the case, that one of these did not ferment, but that's a pretty good amount of them right there. Whoop. Yeah. In all honesty, I have like a whole plate of them right here. Pretty, it's a really impressive variety. I just, I have to say, um, all right, let's keep moving on because we got so many to review. I don't know what this is, but it's split and that's not good. Man, I wish I remembered what all these are. This is getting difficult. This is getting very, very difficult to identify every single one of these, but um, some of these are Capulcurt Negra for sure. Um, some of these are a Coldenom Grease. What is this? Oh, this is a Capulcurt Negra, I believe. A little fermentation, I think, in that one. The uh, Capole Curtain Negra is not cut out for this climate. As good of a fruit as that is. Here's a Smith that's, uh, again, really looks great on the inside. Didn't ferment. Had to pick it early, though. Here is actually a Squirrel Black. Look at that, and it's a really flat fig too, which the flat ones don't necessarily, well, they always usually split, but this one actually looks pretty decent. I know it's not ripe or perfectly ripe. It's actually not bad, but um, I think it belongs in the jam pile. Here's another one that might be better tasting. So I don't know um, what to think of this fig because it has a different shape every time. Oh, this is really good. 
That one's worth eating fresh. I'm o I've always been a big fan of that fig. Um, the issue is the shape. I don't know if it's going to keep splitting or not. I have some Vila de Bordeaux here that uh, actually have split a little bit and actually started to, um, this one may have started to ferment. I can't tell. I don't really want to be eating that. Uh, Vila de Bordeaux, unfortunately, my tree is starting to really crack. Um, if it's not splitting at the eye ever so slightly, that's the thing. It's not the worst splitter in the world. It just will split at the eye. Here's also some Victoria in here that also are splitting, which is really interesting. There's a big oak de Preto, uh, what is this? Preto de Torres Novas. A lot of these split at the eye. And this is one of the worst figs, I think, for a humid climate. It's a, got a round shape to it. It's early, but it just it doesn't do well with the rain. There's another Victoria. What is this? This is actually a uh, Raven de Calci, a really great fruit, but the whole thing's pretty much fermenting. A flat fig, open eye. This is either this is a Violet de Bordeaux right here. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna put that in the fermenting pile. This looks like another Victoria that's split. Victoria that's cracked down the side. This looks like, this is another Victoria. Actually it looks pretty decent, but I know it's not ripe. Another Victoria. Basically Victoria and Villa de Bordeaux Kind of a little bit of a disappointment through this rain event. Um, what are some of the rest of these? The world may never know. Just doing some organizing here. Here's a Smith from two days ago, it looks like. Well, I'm not sure if it is a Smith, but it's really good. Here is, um, what the heck is this? This is a Dalloso, before the rain. It's a good fig, guys. It's got interesting flavors to it. Definitely not your typical I mean, it's not the most intensely flavored fig, but quite interesting. This, I believe, is a, maybe a Rosalino from two days ago. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. They look pretty good throughout this rain event. And they're just really good fruits in general. I think they're worth eating, personally. Worth growing in a humid place for sure. Let's try one. Not the best. This other Rosalino is waterlogged. Not very good. The sugar content's not there. Here is um, some champagne that we picked a couple days ago. I have uh, quite a few champagne that we just picked as well. And uh, I'll show you them all. Most of them have fermented. Or, I'm sorry, most of them have split, not fermented. Kind of a shame, uh, you know, I was really having higher hopes for this variety, but if it's just going to keep doing this, I mean, here's five of them. You can see one of the five 
has not split. And the rest have. They're not a... Well, this one doesn't smell good. Maybe they are fermented. Anyway, they're at least they'll make decent jam, you know. Um, definitely don't want to eat them. Personally, here's another. Here's another one that's split. So that's five out of six that have split. And uh, other days that they've they've been splitting as well. Um, what are some of the rest of these fruits? Here's a whole plate of Rodino del Nord. Ain't that impressive. It's a lot of figs. And they're really quite beautiful. Oh, they're a little ugly, but let's cut some of them open. Look at the inside. Whoa. Man, they are just striking on the inside. Got to eat all these figs relatively soon. Wow, look how red that one is. Whoo! That's extremely red. Let's try this one. Let's see how good it is. Yeah. Very, very jammy and berry flavored. That's what you can really expect from this variety. It's got a really intense berry flavor. All right, well, I think we're going to stop this video here because I just I really do have so many more fruits. And uh, I think I need to get on with my day here. <laughs> I think I just I got too much to do today to be doing this. I don't know what this is. This is jam. But I think biggest takeaways, you know, I think the varieties that uh, I always I thought were going to do well are doing well. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I uh, I do believe that some of the figs here that I thought were going to do well, like I said, like the Vernino del Nord, the Smith, the Hetive, the Argentil, um, those are clearly getting way more points than others. Um, Sakura Black. You could even give some points to. Um, also, I believe if Elba and some of the... I do actually have some Blue Celeste in here that were ripe. And uh, although it's a young tree, some of my Blue Celeste figs did indeed split. Um, here's one of them right here. You know, they're not all perfect. They're not all going to be perfect, but... Uh, in time, maturity, with the right amount of water, you guys can get there. Um, although, you know, this is just something, again, we have to deal with in this climate. And there's really just no other way around it. So the more, the faster you just, you know, learn that this is a thing and, and learn that this is something you're going to have to deal with. And also, you know, just accept it the faster we accept the problem, right? Um, that's the first step, right? So um, then we can move on and try to improve and try to solve the issue. But until then, um, there's nothing else really you can do unless you accept it. So um, I hope this brought some good clarity and attention to what what these figs can really do and what it's like growing them in the humid climate. This is a whole bowl of ones that have split and then I also have more that we didn't even get to that have split and started to ferment and et cetera, et cetera. So we got some for fresh eating and some for the jam. See you guys soon. All right. Take care.